What's up everyone, 5280 Reefer, back at you again with a new episode. So, I did kind of want to go on a little rant before the episode started. Uh, I have noticed that like 96% of the viewers I have are unsubscribed. So if you could subscribe, that'd be awesome. If you haven't yet, uh, toss me a like if you like the content and comment. I love to answer questions and talk to you guys, and if you have suggestions on videos you guys would love to see, I'd love to do them. So yeah, let's get on to the topic of today's episode. So basically, um, in my last video, or the video before that even, uh, I mentioned that I was noticing polyp retraction on some of my SPS coral. And I wasn't really sure why that was happening. So I submitted an ICP test. And in my ICP test, all of the results came back good. Let me pull them up and kind of tell you guys what they are. I'm not going to screen share, but I'll tell you guys how it came out. So um, in the tests, my aluminum came out at zero. Um, Antimony came out at zero, arsenic zero, so all the heavy metals came out at zero. So we ruled that out. I was like, all right, well, let's look at macro elements. My chloride is in the green zone, sodium's in the green, calcium, magnesium. Potassium is a smidge high, it's at 500, but that's okay because I've been dosing it. Bromide's green, boron's green, fluoride's green strontium, sulfur, everything is green. Um, the lithium group or the Li group, uh, lithium, nickel, and molybdenum are all in the green. Um, the I group, vanadium, zinc, manganese, iodine, all in the green. Uh, Fe group, chromium, cobalt, and iron, all in the green. Ba group, uh, barium, beryllium, all in the green. So pretty much Everything is in the green. My phosphorus is at 15. Um, I'm not sure how that reading goes. UQ dash liter. I'm not sure how that reading is. Um, and then phosphates also in the green. And salinity is good. It's at 35.1 PPT. So, okay. Well, if that's all good, then what's the issue? You know, um, I started brainstorming. I was like, well, you know, if this is all good, if my water quality is good, all my other corals are doing good, LPS are good, and some SPS are perfectly fine. They don't really have polyp retraction. It's just certain ones in certain spots. So it got me thinking, and I was like, you know what? It could possibly be the Australian stripey. Because it is technically an angelfish, so maybe it's finished up all the aptasia and it's picking at the polyps of the SPS. Well, I watched the tank and I never really saw it do that, you know, so... But I don't think I watched it enough to be able to say for certain that it's not a contributing factor. So, you know what? I was like... What else could be causing the polyp retraction? I got to looking in the tank and I looked at my MP40s on the wet sides and I noticed there was a lot of algae buildup on them. Um, it wasn't a whole lot of coralline algae, but just hair algae and just gunk in general. And I was like, you know what? I haven't done maintenance on the wet sides in a while. Um, let me go ahead and take them all out and clean them off, brush them off, put it back together and get it back in the tank. I have extra like spare wet sides for the MP40s, but I do not have any spare wet sides for the MP60s. But it's okay, since it wasn't really um, coralline algae, it was just regular green algae and sludge on there. I was able to pull them out take them apart, brush them off under the sink, clean them up really good, put them back together and put them in the tank. And I will tell you that there was a massive difference in flow in the tank. 
And I, I mean, it was massive to the point where the fish were getting kind of like pushed around again and a lot more than usual. And the corals were definitely feeling the flow a lot more now. And, you know, I was thinking, I was like, you know, I, I didn't expect a little bit of algae buildup on my power heads to make those MP40s lose so much flow. It kind of blew my mind, you know, that it, it affected it so much. And within three, four days, um, some of the other corals that had polyp retraction, the SPS mainly, um, I started noticing that their polyps were coming out more and more. And I was like, holy crap. So this was the issue. It was flow. Um, the corals were not getting enough flow. So, you know, that uh, TCK Pikachu had really, really, really good polyp extension before. And all of a sudden, it was like, I mean, the polyp extension was completely gone. That hasn't fully extended its polyps out yet, but I'm starting to see the polyps are coming out more and more out of those little coralites. So it's definitely a very positive change and everything's kind of bouncing back. I even noticed on uh, one of my smaller colonies of SPS, um, the Pearlberry, that it was starting to get STN at the bottom of it. And I'm guessing that's because of flow. Because everything else, alkalinity, all of my other parameters are on point and have been very, very stable. So it, it just comes to show you that as everyone has been saying, you know, flow is probably more important than lighting or any of that other stuff. And it really is, you know, um, just seeing those polyps bounce back and, and the color that has kind of come back into my corals ever since um, I cleaned up those power heads is, is amazing. You know, I will definitely have a mental note on that, that the MP40s need to be cleaned up at least once a month. And it's not very hard with the um, MP40s because you just turn it off, pull out the wet side. There's no cables involved in there. Clean them up with a brush and throw them right back in. So I'm most likely going to be doing that once a month. Um, it doesn't take very long. It takes about... I would say five, 10 minutes a piece. Uh, if you want to do a thorough cleaning, you know, taking it apart and cleaning it up really nice. And I'm sure that's going to make the lifespan of those wet sides last a bit longer since there's less chances of it, you know, cracking or anything like that. And I'm not using any, uh, what's it called citric acid or any vinegar or anything like that since I don't have a whole lot of coralline buildup. But yeah, guys, uh, it, it just... It really did blow me away that a little bit of algae can have such an absurd effect on the flow of power heads. And I've always known that flow is very important for coral, but it just, it's a wake up call. You know, that the simplest thing that we overlook by having a little bit of algae growing on the power heads can have such an drastic effect on corals and um yeah i don't think i'm gonna be making that mistake again you know um i could have lost coral because of it uh and i'm sure my cyano because i've also been dealing with cyano as you guys know um i'm sure the cyano is slowly gonna start going away too because i have been noticing that ever since i started dosing that uh microbacter clean and and the uh, coral snow and increased flow so there's a lot less cyano on the rocks and there's a lot less cyano on the sand bed but you know because of this whole ordeal that ended up happening with the flow um i did notice a while ago that my sunset millie had completely retracted its polyps after it got stung uh, by the Aptasia. 
but it never recovered. And now it's got me thinking that uh, my big, massive WWC uh, yellow tips is on top of it, and it's kind of been covering it. And to the side of it as well, so I'm wondering now if it's not getting enough flow. So I will be taking it out and putting it in a different spot and seeing if I can get polyp extension again. And if I can, then, hey, that's another huge win. So yeah, you know, small issues like this that we can potentially overlook can have such dire and big consequences uh, in our reef aquaria. So yeah, don't overlook the small things. Because it may be a big contributing factor to issues if you even do have issues in your tank. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, well, that was my son. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, you guys have a wonderful day. And keep on reefing.